This summer, 15 hermits will stop at nothing to collect everything. My name is Pixel Ritz, and this is the Hardcore Hermits Recap. It's like the world's most rubbish game show. As our five teams slam dunked their way out of week two, only one player had been claimed by the perils of playing in hardcore mode, leaving Team Dodgy Jumper going into their final three episodes without the help of Biffa. But as the scores slowly increase and the items get more and more obscure, the remaining contestants are going to have to pull out all the stops. Everyone think that fire putty out your thoughts. Think fire putty out your thoughts. With the scores looking like this from the end of week two, we're going to dive straight into episodes seven through nine. Once again, there are spoilers for who lives, who dies, and who tells your story. So without further ado, let's start with episode seven. Okay, boys, I'm in the nether. It looks absolutely horrifying. As team two and a half men try anything they can do to raise their PPM, they split up and head for very different places. Iskel to the nether, Beef to the sea, and Rendog back to the chest full of colorful concrete. Snapshot knowledge, or lack of it, might end up being the deciding factor here, as Beef has never actually seen the drowned before and has some interesting ideas about which fish you can catch. Can you catch, like, dolphins? No, I think they're too, they're too big for the bucket. I, I think they're not an item. <laughs> they're too big for the empathy. bucket. Iskal's time in the nether is swift and efficient, and he has plenty of junk to dunk in their fancy basketball hoop. Team Zit has a better idea on how to track all of the new and unexplored content. Guys, can you put in the comments how you collect coral, please? It'll be really useful for us yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Still not quite sure how coral works, Impulse delivers some dead bits to the shrine, while Zedaf is digging for ore blocks and valuable metals in his third mining session of the season, and Tango is just running around undressing every sheep he meets. I think it might be optimal for me to just stand here. <laughs> and wait for these stupid sheep to grow their dumb fur. Team GFX employs a similar tactic, except with more running around the place. Having dropped off false for crafting duty, they once again split up, with Scar going for wools and the jungly materials, and Azuma heading back to the mesa for the red sand and sandstone he forgot to get the first time. At least he has a guinea pig saddle on him. I feel... Hey, finally! I was about to say, I feel like I'm really just wasting my time. After Scar is done going Jumanji and is generally tired of playing at 3 frames per second, they decide to meet up at the Mesa and head home, giving Azuma an excuse to dig the gold in them thar hills. Joe Hills and Python GB head down to the mines to grab as much iron as they can in the name of Team PJs. Python makes a case for strip mining being therapeutic. It's boring, but it's also therapeutic at the same time. <laughs> Why pay for a competent medical professional when you can just, you know, use a video game you already have? But Cleo needs something a little stronger. Don't have enough drugs to deal with you this morning. <laughs> These are non-recreational prescribed pharmaceuticals, just for reference, everybody. <laughs> because there's nothing recreational about being forced to deal with me and Python. Although the team might be the only thing keeping her sane with all those colours of glass to sort through. While Python searches caves for easy resources, Joe heads to the nether and is menaced by the same lava fall as basically everyone else. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Directly above the entrance to the nether, and I think I've successfully diverted it. And speaking of lava falls... Because you need three... Three die perk! I'm dead. I'm so dead. But a little before that, we find Wells Knight and Ijevin, the remaining members of Team Dodgy Jumper, gearing up for at least one of them to head to the nether and reclaim Biffa's scorched remains. So while Jevin works his way through coloured concrete and forgets Cyan exists for the second time in a row, it's like, <laughs> you're like, uh, I don't think I'm I'm missing one, and I'm like, it's Cyan. Wells Knight crafts some armour and follows Biffa's trail back to the nether portal before it goes cold. And, well, you know what happens next. Dang it. No! <laughs> Well, it's up to me now. Ah! Which leaves Ijevin as the sole remaining member of Team Dodgy Jumper for the next two episodes, and he wisely decides to leave the Nether alone. It might ultimately affect their final score, but at least he'll avoid being burned alive. Episode 7 is done and is even looking a little crispy around the edges, but that just adds flavour to the scoreboard. Let's stick a fork in it and move on to episode 8. Right out of the gate, Team Zit employs the screw nature tactic. Punch every flower I see, is that what you're saying? We hate flowers. <laughs> Team Zit against flowers. Zedaf is swiftly appointed as the dying boy, the one with the colours, not the tiny Tim type, and Tango, having out shepherded himself, drops out into the nether for the loot they still need. So, almost everything, including potion supplies. But the true hero of the episode is Impulse. Not only does he stumble upon the deadliest find, a skelly spawner in a random cave with some horse armor in it. Like, oh, oh, there's a, a spawner. Okay. Oh, jeez. Nice. I, I don't know yet because of things. 
But on top of that, he proves that the Zit are a merciful bunch when he saves a dolphin from death through its own stupidity. Oh, he's dying! Get in the water! Save him! I saved Drop him. all the challenges! I saved him. <laughs> he owes you a point. <laughs> he does. He owes me something. Unlike that dolphin who looked at Iskel the wrong way, but that's another story. Iskel goes out in search of cacti, and the correct plural for cacti. It's uh, Torchai, Lapai, uh, Ferni, Cactuses. While Beef goes caving and Ren stays at home dealing with the nightmare kaleidoscope of his die chest. I've had nightmares about this chest of coloured stuff in it. I, I've literally had nightmares <laughs> about it. With the cactuses handled, Iskal heads back to the nether, mostly so his computer won't keep crashing every time the other two try to sleep, but also so he can get glowstone and whatnot. And it's those whatnots that Team Dodgy Jumper will have to do without, as Wells Knight and Biffa inconveniently died before they could return to the shrine with nether stuffs. Ijevin quite sensibly sticks to what he can acquire and craft from the area nearby with the materials he has to hand, figuring that a long journey is just going to mean less time spent scoring points. I'm chugging along here guys, I'm trying my best. So he resorts to scrolling around the advancements list looking for those easy items, and actually manages to put in quite a few before the buzzer sounds. Uh, we never put charcoal in there? Oh my god. Team GFX, still with all three members alive and well, but scattered across the world, decides to regroup. But despite their plan last time being to meet up at the Mesa, Scar just turns around and goes directly for home base. The same goes for Azuma, but he has to find his horse and the saddle on it first, which is quite a challenge when the horses have the cloaking technology of the Predator. Whoever paid two diamond blocks for a land boat ripped us off. The talk of land boats and cats finally brings the team together, in the literal sense, and Scar even outruns Azuma to the hopper, dumping his own saddle in it before X can even unhorse his. Also, False is now a dragon. Don't question it. The dragon. No, the Die Master. The Die Master. The dragon? I've yes. been to a dragon? I've, I've finally reached my final form, guys. I'm a yeah. dragon. After proving his PvE chops in the caves around their shrine, Python GB goes to the nether in the name of Team PJs, while Joe Hills and Zombie Cleo figure out what's left to craft. Borrowing Joe's armor and Fortune 2 pickaxe, the better to bring in more quartz, Python ends up tracking down a nether fortress, looting the chests he can find, and camping a blaze spawner. But despite defending himself like a professional up to this point, he takes a wrong turn on the way out, and disaster strikes in the form of two wither skeletons. No! No! Ah! No! It's now up to Joe Hills to avenge him, or at least find his stuff before it despawns. I'm famously good at hitting things to death. Which he does, but with an inventory that's too full to save everything before the inevitable happens. Ah! Did everything despawn? Yep! So episode 8 despawns in front of our eyes, and the scoreboard reappears thanks to the magic of video editing. This episode of Hardcore Hermits Recap is brought to you by Numbers, and the final episode is brought to you specifically by the number 9. Welcome to the final episode of Hardcore Hermits 2, but also the best episode. <laughs> Team PJs recover admirably from the loss of Python, although it might have something to do with the fact that he's still floating around in spectator mode making jokes about their score. I hope Absolutely. the server doesn't crash because we're on 404. Well, that would actually be a 503 error there, Python. If you understood HTTP oh, access we're 99 codes. Away from that. So as Cleo rolls out the red carpet and we all question Joe Hills' approach to item storage. Where is the redstone one? It's in the die chest, I bet. Yes, of course it is. It's brightly colored. It Dev has the <laughs> name of a color in its name. Let's just, <laughs> let's just accept that there is a logic to this, Cleo, and you don't have to like it. They cram in as many items as they can, even if it means Joe briefly going back to the nether and returning covered in fire. I died! Water, so Cleo, is there water anywhere near here? The Rendog carry is real, as Team Two and a Half Men has pretty much all the coloured items done, except for banners, which Ren starts putting together in this episode, crafting a ton of white banners with the aim of dyeing them different colours, except that dyeing banners after they've been crafted just makes patterns, because that's how banners work. So while he's frantically running around getting a bunch more wool, Vintage Beef writes Iskal's biography. Actually, I don't think that was written. It, no, it's here. It's here. <laughs> and Iskal ticks some tropical fish off his bucket list. With the final rush to get points, Vintage Beef submits his very legs. Okay, legs are in there. So if he did have legs before, he doesn't now. Meanwhile, iJevin is missing two pairs of legs and the teammates to go with them, but he still does an admirable job rounding up points to honor the memory of Team Dodgy Jumper. A round trip to the nearby coral reefs, dark oak forests, and swamps bring in a handful of extra points, and he spends the rest of the episode cranking out carpets until the final bell rings. I can't see anything. The achievements are in the way. 
When the advancement toasts are getting in the way of your crafting interface, you know you've done something right. Which, as we later find out, is entirely optional, but more on that in a moment. For now, let's all stare in awe at the tremendous luck of Team Zit with the spooky and scary bunch. As for the second season of Hardcore Hermits in a row, Tango Tech punches a wither skeleton so hard its skull comes off. Oh, oh a skull! A skull! Woo! Oh, nice! <gasps> oh, he's still there. Yeah! As he safely returns to the drop point, the team goes all out with potion brewing, utilizing some alternative chemistry. What, what potion are they? Potion of poop. Potion of poop. But the sad truth is that they didn't have to utilize any chemistry to begin with, since the system has been set up to recognize any potion, including the potion of bottled water. Once the last tactical thought is gone, just like that Silk Touch Enderman and his grass block. Oh, he had a grass block for a second. Team Zit drop right into panic mode, flushing all of their inventories into the shrine and pausing only to celebrate the big 500 points. They even craft some fireworks for the occasion, but instantly dump those into the hopper as well, instead of letting them fly. Finally, all tired and stressed out, Tango, ZF, and Impulse greet the end of the season just chilling on top of their dirt house, hoping everyone else was just bad enough for them to win. Kick back and enjoy some cocktails, mm -hmm. gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> A finale that's much different from episode 9 from Team GFX. Oh, oh they're here! Know. In the final push to win, and let's face it, probably following a spreadsheet or something, they don't even bat an eyelid to crossing that beautiful 500 points. While Scar and False are dying and crafting all over the place, Azuma wanders off with buckets to try and get the lastest of the snapshot items as well as tending to his younglings. I'm gonna go check on my eggs. And this even leads to him avenging his teammates from the previous season. I got one, nice! I got a puffer yeah. fish. Then, out of ideas proper, the team once again scatters for the straggler points, false even getting hold of a soundtrack for the occasion. I got a record, guys! <laughs> nice! That's hilarious. In desperation, Azuma jumps back into the nether and starts a pigman war to get that golden sword they already dropped into the shrine. But despite these reckless actions, the first disaster strikes when Scar is too carried away with crafting to notice that he's literally being eaten alive. No! No! Scar! Oh, you had so much more time to live! <laughs> Not wanting to let a good scar go to waste, they cram what remains of him into the shrine too. But as the sun sets, the MVPs of the first season come out for a rematch. Oh, oh they're here! You we want more us. points! We want more points, False! We want more- Oh, wait a minute, hang on. False is slain within moments, but Azuma holds off long enough to see some wings burning. And sadly, no membrane is dropped. But it's not like they have the elytra for it anyway. And so the man of the turt stands alone, wondering who really are the winners of this season. So that's all the action from Hardcore Hermit Season 2, and all that remains is to take a look at the final scores. Our runners up are Team Dodgy Jumper, Team PJs, and in third place, Team Two and a Half Men. Team Zip followed hard on the heels of Team GFX, and in a sudden twist, with that one point from the Dolphin, they still didn't quite make it. And Team GFX are the winners with 540 points. Congratulations to False Symmetry, Azuma, and Good Times with Scar on their win. Congrats to the other teams for a very close contest, and here's hoping Season 3 comes along soon. Although maybe not too soon, I kind of want my weekends back. This Hardcore Hermits recap has been a production of the unofficial Hermitcraft recap, edited by me, Pixel Riffs, and co-written with XP. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, tune in on Sunday for the Hermitcraft recap, and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss future episodes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.